Uh, hey, boys, girls, lady boys, Z's, and everybody else. So it is officially Friday. It is a Friday, April 29th. And I am just sitting here with my feet up in the room because I was going to go out and walk along the water. And I decided, screw it. <laughs> I don't want to do it today. You've been having enough Let's Live videos. Um, and I am just kind of tired, but I am happy to say my foot is looking a lot better. Um, so anybody who has been following the story uh, for for the last couple of days will know I got cellulitis, uh, which is a surprisingly horrible disease. Uh, when I was in a UTIA, but if you look at my feet, if you look at my feet. It's hard to tell which foot had the cellulitis and which foot didn't. You probably can. But, uh, but basically, this is the foot that had the cellulitis, and this is the foot that's healthy. And as you can see, I have veins on my feet. And as you can see, you're starting to see the veins show through again on this foot. So I'm very happy with that. You can see the little thing on the side. And basically, if you looked at these both of these feet together, and you did not know that one of those feet had a horrible, horrible, nasty, god-awful, oh my god, do not do a Google image search on cellulitis, um, disease, you wouldn't know that it was disease. You might look at it and go, oh, it seems a little puffy. But well, you wouldn't realize it's a really nasty, horrible disease. So, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm very happy to say that the Cipro is doing a wonderful job. The Cipro is doing a wonderful job. And the other, uh, other antibiotic that they gave me, uh, that's going well. And my foot is getting better. And yay! Yay! That is a good thing. That is a good thing. There's, there's nothing quite so much like the experience of sitting there and realizing the disease you have really is really is quite bad, <laughs> really is quite horrible, really is kind of those disease one of those diseases where you really could lose your foot. Uh oh, my wife came back. Why did my wife come back? I'm leaving in a minute. I'll go on a walk. Okay, now she's gonna go on a walk because she was supposed to be gone. She was gonna go off to the grocery store and buy cut fruit or something or find the grocery store. Did no, you find not the grocery cut store? Fruit, whole fruit, but it oh, wasn't a grocery fruit. store. There wasn't a grocery store at all. It was like a 7-Eleven slash liquor store. There's a zillion 7-Elevens here. Okay. Yeah, but it wasn't a 7-Eleven, but it was like a 7-Eleven. Yeah. So I just yeah. got some dry fruit. Okay. So anyways, she's in the background. So I have to be careful what I say right now. No, you do not. <laughs> she watches all the videos anyway. It's really horrible. I keep telling her not to. It's like, you're not allowed to watch the videos. But she does anyway. Anyways, bye. Bye. It's been nice. Go out there, bake in the sun. Bake in the sun. Mm -hmm. Anyways. So the big thing that I was going to say, I'm drinking Nescafe right now. Have you ever had Nescafe? Nescafe is like the worst thing in the world. Um, I do not know what's going on with people that created Nescafe. But Nescafe is actually what most of the world people, most of the people in the world consider coffee. This crap right here, like if you go around the world, uh, you don't normally get Starbucks around the world. You normally actually get Nescafe. So when you go to Europe, you get Nescafe. When you go to South America, you get Nescafe. When you come to Asia, you get Nescafe. The only place that hasn't lost their goddamn mind when it comes to coffee, apparently, is the United States and maybe Canada. But the rest of the world, they think this crap is coffee. And it is really just caustic, horrible crap. It's really, really sad. <laughs> it's like, why? Why, world? Anyway, so I'm just sitting sitting here drinking a little bit of the Nescafe as I talk to you folks. So, I figured uh, if I'm just going to be sitting here and talking, I might as well do a nice little clickbaity title, a clickbaity video today, um, since I'm not doing anything really exciting, and talk about the new Captain America movie. Because if you want to think about something really weird, if you want to think about something that is a little bit mind-blowing in its own way, so, uh, so I have my nice little cellulitis disease here, and one of the things with cellulitis is I have to take the uh, take the meds and basically stay out of the heat, which is really hot, um, and basically uh, not be on my feet, basically be off my feet most of the day. Uh, so since I'm kind of stuck and can't do a lot, um, I decided to go off and actually see Captain America today. And what's really weird, what's really weird about the modern world is I do believe Captain America like just came out. Like, I think it actually came out, like, in the United States, like, a couple of days ago. So the thought that I can be all the way over here in Thailand, 
I can be in a place where you can literally get a guest house room for $4.25, where you can get a meal for a dollar. Again, where you can travel through this country. I'm not traveling through this country that way right now. But you can actually travel through this com- country for like 10 to $15 per day. And even here, even here, you can go into a nice stadium seating type, uh, type theater and watch Captain America. If that isn't a kind of like a little bit like, ooh, I don't know what is. And not only can you watch Captain America, but you can watch it in English. I was actually saying there in English. The only weird thing, though, is here in Thailand, um, like they have like they have the Thai version. So they have the Thai, I guess where it's, um, it's dubbed. They have the Thai dubbed version. But then they have the English version. The only thing I disliked about watching the English version, version is even on the English version, even though they have a Thai version, this is specifically an English version, on the English version they still subtitled it in Thai. So it kind of took away from the whole, like, insane, like, all engrossing special effects because you have these big, big subtitles on the bottom. Um, but, but overall... Good. It was it was a good time. Good theater here. Very very nice. Um, as far as Captain America goes, I actually have to give it a thumbs up. I really do have to give it a thumbs up. A lot of folks that have been watching these uh, these little vlogs for a while know that I kind of got ruined by Deadpool. Like Deadpool was just such a good movie. I just love Deadpool. I don't know what it is. I think the Deadpool is like one of the best movies that's been out in a long, long, long time. Um, and so, uh, and so every movie I've seen like since Deadpool, basically the main thing I have to say is. Oh, it's not Deadpool. Even Star Wars wasn't Deadpool. <laughs> like, Deadpool was just so... I don't know what it was. Like, I was just rolling, rolling watching Deadpool. Um, and then, like, Star Wars comes out. I've been waiting for a good Star Wars for, like, 30 years of my life. And then I'm sitting there watching the latest Star Wars going, Yeah, I'm still waiting for a good Star Wars. My wife likes Star Wars. But I just... I don't know what it is. There's, like, this weird thing. Like, people either, like, really liked uh, those new Star Wars, or they were like me that was like, Really? Really, this is it. Again, when Han Solo died, I think what I think what really ruined Star Wars for me was when like Han Solo was just like chucked like just like a used piece of toilet paper. It was just like he Han Solo is one of the most most uh, renowned or whatever characters to ever exist in cinematic history, and then they just kind of like dispose of him in like a plot point that barely has like half a second. And it's just like, what? What? You take, like, the great... I mean, again, if you look at if you look at Star Wars, I would argue Princess Leia, um, Han Solo, Darth Vader, and, uh, was it Boba Fett? Were probably, like, really the real awesome characters. I mean, Luke Skywalker was there. Does anybody really care about Luke Skywalker? But then he just... Then, then Han Solo, he just gets, like, gutted and, like, chucked off the bridge. And I know what they were trying to do there. It was trying to, trying to like, replicate the whole thing, I guess, when Ben... Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi or whatever died. But you're like, eh, no. Uh, uh, what the hell happened there? But anyway, so... Uh, so I wasn't even impressed with um, Star Wars or any of that. But I really liked Captain America. Um, so if you're interested in going, um, there's a lot of people, like, I won't do any spoilers here, uh, as far as Captain America is concerned, um, but there, there were a lot of people worried about certain facets of Captain America, um, and really none of those problems were actually problems. So, so one of the ideas with Captain America um, is basically, it's really Avengers 3. Um, which has been widely publicized. Like, there are a lot of characters in it. There are a lot of characters in it. Um, and one of the big problems was, one of the big, big problems that people asked, were, were worried about is when you throw so many characters into one movie, um, it doesn't cause any problems. Um, and, and what I would actually argue, what was interesting with this movie, is realistically, I don't think there were any more characters in it than most normal movies. It's simply that you knew all the characters. Right? So if you go watch a Jason Bourne movie, or if you go watch a Star Wars movie, or any of these movies, there's a lot of characters in there. But then there are the main characters that you actually know the histories of and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then there's all the side characters. What I would argue is with uh, Captain America Civil War, all of those side characters simply happen to be people that you know the backstory of. Um, so, 
oh, who, who, who do you know that's in there? So, like, the Falcon, right? So, yeah, the Falcon is in there, but basically he's kind of a side character, right? You know, uh, Bucky, Bucky Roberts or whatever is in there, and you happen to know the history. And so what I would, ar what, what I would argue is, again, like, people worry that, oh, there are so many of these, these superhero characters in there, um, it's just going to turn into a, a, a complete mess. And realistically, I would simply say it's not that there's any more characters and therefore it turns into a mess. It's just simply you know all the characters so much better, right? So, uh, so it would be kind of like um, you know with uh, with Star Wars. If you watch the the Star Wars movie and there was that weird little uh, the, the the version of Yoda, the new version of Yoda, you know, with the one with the glasses and all that, with the little little eyes. I mean, imagine like that character if they had actually made an entire movie um, about that person beforehand. Um, it doesn't make so the Star Wars movie any more complicated to include her. Um, it just simply means you know that backstory more. Or like that fighter pilot, was it Poe or whatever in Star Wars? Like ima Just simply imagine if Poe uh, not only was a character in the Star Wars movie, but there would simply have been a movie about Poe previously so that you knew even more about him. Um, so that's where you get all the characters in there. I didn't really find it to be too... Too much of a mess that way. Um, the only, yeah, the only thing that I found was a little bit of a mess is they did kind of have to, like, trying to turn the fight scenes into something that was like vaguely coherent. That was a bit of a mess, um, and the whole, the whole central storyline was a bit curious. I think they kind of. I don't know what happened there. It seemed like they were like 98% of a really good core plot line, um, and then just didn't cut quite bother with the final 2%. They just kind of find like, eh, right, this is why they're all fighting. And you're like, you know what, if you're just taking a little bit more time to figure that out, um, it, it would work well. But you know there's Spider-Man in there. And again, I was worried, like, oh my golly, how the hell are they going to shove Spider-Man in there? But I thought the whole Spider-Man thing actually worked out really well. Like, again, it wasn't like this huge, long thing. Um, it was a decent amount of the movie. But it was like, wow, yeah, okay, that actually makes sense. And the reason that he's being brought in makes sense. And the whole thing that I can't really talk about makes sense. And it all kind of, sort of comes together. So overall, that way, as far as all the different characters I thought worked out very well. The overall storyline was pretty fast paced and pretty nice. It was like go, 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 go. So it didn't, it didn't get dry and tedious and horrible like uh, like Batman vs. Superman. Oh, that was a piece of trash movie. That was horrible. Um, so it didn't get bogged down that way. Really, the only the only thing that was really kind of weird, and again, without the spoilers, is, is, is you know, it's Civil War. It's these people against these people. And it was kind of like... I don't know, it's these people against these people. It kind of got phoned in a little bit because you know, you know, you know it's basically Iron, the Iron Man faction against the, 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 the Steve, Steve whatever, Roberts, or the, the, the Steve guy, the, uh, the, the Captain America guy, right? Um, and the, thi the thing that I didn't understand with the Captain America guy, which really, 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 really didn't make sense, is that is that he's the kind of the one that doesn't want to deal with, uh, I don't think this is too spoiler, he's the one that, that believes that the, the Avengers should stay free or whatever and not sign the Accords. Um, but his whole high and mighty stance on that seems really, really freaking bizarre considering he's literally the soldier. He is literally the guy who signed up to fight in World War II, who signed up to get injected with all this crap to be turned into a super soldier, and then was the one to go off and fight as a soldier. And so him being so, like, anti, like, anti-authoritarian to the point that everybody's beating the shit out of each other, that didn't really make sense. Like, like Tony Stark, I mean, you gotta think about it. You know, Tony Stark is the one that is anti-authoritarian most of the time and actually created all of his stuff. I mean, he created his power. He created the Iron Man suit. And he, cre he actually built all that stuff. So if he was super anti-authoritarian, it would make a little bit more sense but when you have, like, literally Captain America, like, the, the, the poster boy for the military talking about... And especially the way it comes across in the movie, you're just sitting there kind of scratching your head like, what? 
<laughs> that doesn't really make sense. And then, and then, as you watch the entire movie, you're just like, what? <laughs> what? I don't, I don't think that guy is the right, the right guy to be holding the banner there. But, you know, what do I know? What do I know? But overall, like I say, it was a very good movie. It was very fast-paced. Like some of these movies nowadays, um, they kind of slow down, and they get tedious, and they get horrible, and it's just like, oh, when is it going to be over? Like I found that, I think, with uh, with Avengers. Um, I think like the final fight scene with like the Avengers, the original Avengers, he just gets so long to the point that it starts getting tedious. Um, with this one, it doesn't. Uh, the, the big thing that I just didn't understand with this one, and I don't know how they're going to put it back together, which I'm sure they will because they've got another 20 movies coming up, is just, I don't know, like the, yeah, the people siding, the people, the whole, the whole, like the whole Captain America contingent, I just really don't understand. You just sit there and you're like, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's me. Again, I'm I'm not anti-authoritarian. I, I believe in a lot of the military stuff, but it was just like, I just don't... I don't know, that was just so weird. So, uh -huh. That was my thought on the Captain America movie. Go see Captain America. I'm not saying it's as good as Deadpool, uh, but it's close. It's close. It is a very good movie. It ties all this stuff together. Um, it ties, you know, all this stuff comes together, um, and it's definitely a hell of a lot better. It's a hell of a lot better than that Batman vs. Superman crap. Oh, I don't know what the hell DC Comics is doing. DC Comics, I just don't think, knows how to make a movie anymore. It's just horrible stuff. But yeah, it's really interesting. It's also interesting to see just this whole... You know how how in this modern world, like Disney, is able to create this entire universe of movies. I mean, it really is actually very impressive, and how all these things feed into each other. And like with Black Panther, I was kind of worried with Black Panther. Like I was wor I was worried with Spider Man. I've never been a fan of Spider Man, so I was worried with Spider Man being brought in that that was going to turn it to crap. But they actually brought in Spider Man very well. This isn't Sony Spider Man. This is Disney Spider Man. Um, they did Spider Man very well. And then again with Black Panther. Um, again, I get blank, I get I get accused so much of the time of this whole social justice warrior crap. And again, as I say, I'm a common sense warrior. But anyways, um, and so, but even with me, like I, I like to see strong minority. I hate to say minority characters, but I was kind of worried that they were gonna phone in this whole Black Panther. You know, Black Panther. He is the king of this super high-tech African country, and he's going to be the super fighter guy. And it's just like, oh, this is gonna go bad, isn't it? <laughs> this is just this is just going to be a very, very, very bad. This is gonna be like blackface done Marvel style. I really was worried about that, but the whole Black Panther character actually came off really well. He was a really he was an enjoyable character to watch. He was somebody that you were emotionally invested in. He was somebody that you felt was both intelligent um, and would have like the physical abilities. Now admittedly it's a Marvel movie so the physical abilities they show on screen. You're like I do believe that person can probably do a flying jump spinning kick. Whether he can do like 50 of them in a row before he hits the ground, I'm not so sure I'd buy that one. But it was like when you looked at him, it, it really, it did not feel like, um, yeah, it didn't feel like Black Panther. I really was, I was really worried about with Black Panther that it was just going to be like Marvel does blackface, especially with some of the crap that these movie companies have been doing lately. Uh, but no, it was actually a really, really, really good, well done character there. So, so yeah. Yeah, I can't really say anything bad. Again, I can't say a lot about the movie, because as soon as you start talking a lot about the movie, people are like, oh, you bastard, you spoiled it. And there are a lot of interesting things in there. There are a lot of people that were really worried, like, since you saw Spider-Man um, in the uh, in the preview, then that means, oh, the movie is spoiled. Um, but no, there are characters in there that you don't know are going to be in there that aren't in the previews. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there. And again, the previews... I mean, more or less, they give you an idea of what's going on, but so many, so many of the scenes that they show you are cut in such a way that the scenes that you see in the previews, although they mirror the tone of the movie, those scenes are actually almost 180 degrees different 
the actual context is different in the in the movie than what it is you see in the uh, in the uh, the trailer. So that was nice too, because again, some of these trailers nowadays, the problem is they give you so much of the trailer that basically you're just going through the movie, you know, just watching and watching a longer version of the trailer. And what was good with this is since they use clips of scenes, but they use them in a different context. The nice part was that when you watch the movie, it allows your mind to be relatively clear with what is actually going on. Instead of your mind filling in the blanks, there's all these different things. You're like, oh, yeah, that's really kind of cool. So yeah, so overall, overall it was good. Overall it was good. If you go out there and watch it, though, you will, you will definitely know which side I would be on. <laughs> You'd be like, hmm. I do, I do not believe for a moment that anybody out there will be confused on which, Eli, which side Eli would be, would be arguing for. But, uh, but yeah, that, that was the only thing. That was the only weird thing is the actual, the pretext for the fight. And the pretext for the fighting. Like, like holy crap. And you're just like, eh. You know. <laughs> if these are the good guys, can I have a bad guy, please? But anyways... Oh, so those are the thoughts. Those are your thoughts as far as Captain America Civil War goes. Definitely, definitely something to, 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 to watch. Definitely one of the, the better ones that they've put out. Um, and all all the quibbles that I heard people talk about. And again, I'm not a huge Marvel. I mean, I watch all the Marvel movies, but I'm not I'm not that kind of geek. Um, and so if you're not if you're not super anal on all the different storylines and all the, the, the yeah, it's it's a good movie. So that's my thought. That's my thought from here in Thailand. Other than that, we're still figuring out exactly what we're going to be doing. So my foot is healing up nicely. My, uh, my, um, my hands are healing up nicely from the, uh, from the heat, heat rash. Uh, we are trying to figure out what to do next, though, what exactly we're going to be doing. Because I was sitting here thinking, huh. Um, it seems really weird that, that Thailand is this hot right now. So I've been to Thailand before, and I know Thailand is a hot place. Um, but it is really hot. Like, it is so hot that, like, we were noticing some of the Thai people, and they'd have, like, this weird white stuff on their faces. And I, when I originally looked at it, um, I just thought it was really, like, piss-poor, crappy suntan lotion or something that they were using. Uh, but apparently, no. Apparently, it is so hot, what that crap is, is the ties are actually having problems with things like heat rash and all that kind of stuff. And that crap is actually, they're putting calamine lotion uh, on themselves. Uh, because even though they're used to, they're from here... Um, apparently, uh, this really, really, really is hot even for them. And so I went on and I do, did a Google search today for a uh, heat, uh, what, what was it? Oh crap. What did I do a Google search for? Heat, heat spell? Heat wave. Oh, heat wave, right? So I did a heat wave in Thailand. Uh, so I was looking at heat wave in Thailand, and literally in the news, uh, the top, the top quote, the, the top title is Extreme Heat Sears Southeast Asia with all time records. Worst heat wave in Thailand in 65 years. So apparently, um, you know, when I was, I was telling you folks about all the different heats, I was saying, you know, it was going to be like 110 or whatever in Sukhothai, I think it was yesterday. Um, well, little did I know, little did I know, but apparently, I think it was either yesterday or the day before, uh, Thailand actually had one of their record-breaking days for heat. It was like 111.5 or something. And they were saying in some of the places in Thailand, it has been a month of averaging over 104 degrees per day. So uh, we're having a bit of an issue there. Because, again, I knew coming to Thailand would be hot. I don't want to be like, oh, it's hot here. Uh, but, you know, there's a difference between, like, balls hot and worst heat wave in 65 years type of deal. Um, and so that's the issue that we're having is obviously I've already had the, 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 the cellulitis in my foot. I've had the heat rash in my hands. Um, it doesn't appear that this heat wave is going to be breaking any time within a month. So any time within the time where they were supposed to be here anyway. Um, and so that's making us kind of rethink what we want to do. Right? Because, I mean, if you come to a place like this, the whole thing is you want to be able to walk, you want to be able to stroll, you want to be able to poke around and take a look at things. But when it's so hot out, it's literally dangerous to be out there too much. Um, that doesn't really make it too fun. 
no. <laughs> you know, so it's like, Err, what are we going to do? So I think what we're going to do, we, have, we still have to make the final decision. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Angkor Wat. So we're here, we're here another two nights. So we're here tonight, we're here tomorrow, and then we're here tomorrow night. Then the day after that, we I may want to get another night here just to make sure I'm completely healed or healed enough. Um, or we may just get that day basically go from here to Angkor Wat or to Siam Reap in Cambodia, which is where Angkor Wat is. Then spend somewhere between three to seven days in Angkor Wat because Angkor Wat is like one of the most amazing ruin systems in the entire world. And then after that, go to Bangkok and essentially fly out. I looked at Qatar Airways, and again, you have to pay another change fee, <laughs> and you have to pay some money, but overall, it should be relatively easy to get a flight back to Dulles. And so I think that's what we might end up doing, because again, it is just, it's brutally hot. I mean, again, like we, we saw the, uh, when we were in a Utia, the, uh, the hotel owner there, I mean, the hotel owner is just like, it's so hot. It's so, it's so hot. He's so funny. He, he, was like a, he was like a hotel owner out of the movies. I swear he seemed like he should have been in a Hollywood movie. And he's like, he's like this completely bald guy. And he just had this look on his face. He said, it's so hot. Oh, it's so hot. And at first I just thought he was being melodramatic. Because he just has, he just looks like somebody that should be out of a, a movie. Um, and then no, apparently, no, apparently it really is that hot. So, hmm. Mm. I think that is what our current thought is. That is what our current thought is. Um, so other than that, other than that, not too much to say. Pattaya is nice enough. Again, Pattaya. Been walking up the, the road every once in a while, walking down the road. Basically, if you're looking for something very close to a first world resort city, um, this would be the place to be. Um, again, they have Starbucks. They have two Starbucks here. They have a full-fledged movie theater. It's pretty nice to go see. They have a beach. They have a long... It's not really a boardwalk. It's like a brick walk. But it's a really long brick walk. Um, so this is definitely a place to come if you know you want more of that. More of, you know, first world on the less expensive. Because, again, we have a really nice hotel room here. And it costs us like 110 bucks or something per night. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's a thought. I feel a little sheepish. I've only been talking for like 26 minutes. I was going to talk about this whole thing about risk today, but maybe I'll talk about that in the morning, about how you got to be out there and be willing to, to risk. you got to be willing to have your foot chopped off if you want to go out there and have success. I'm very happy for my foot. I like my foot. Isn't it a pretty, beauty, beautiful foot? You don't realize how pretty an appendage is until you're worried about getting it cut off. And I know that sounds melodramatic. I know some of you folks are out there going, Oh, look at Eli the computer guy. Or look at Eli and failed normal. He's just being melodramatic about getting his foot chopped off. But all I want you to say is if you think I'm being melodramatic about my nice little foot here, all I want you to do is I want you to Google search cellulitis. I then want you to do images. And then I want you to try to not vomit. <laughs> Again, because cellulitis, when you hear cellulitis... It doesn't sound too bad. You're like, oh, you got a little cellulitis. Sleep it off. No big deal. You know, cellulitis doesn't sound so bad. You hear cellulitis, you're like, oh, I got a little bit of cellulitis. Sounds like a blister, right? Sounds like something slightly worse than a blister or a mole or something like that. It's not what you will see if you do an image search for cellulitis. Do an image search for cellulitis, and then you will know why I am petting my foot. I like my foot. Oh, my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful foot. I don't know what I would do without you, foot. My love. My lovely foot. You're so... You're just so pretty. Just so gorgeous. I didn't know what I had until I thought I might actually lose you. And again, it really did. I mean, I mean again, it was like, oh, haha. Ha. No, you don't understand. It went from, like, swelling here to the point, like, the entire foot was swollen, and out of here was, like, dark dark blood was coming out and like it went from that so like in the morning like I think the night before it felt a little swollen then in the morning it was swollen here 
And then by the afternoon, that's when I took off, like 2 o'clock or whatever, I took off my, my, my sock, and that's when the blood started coming out, but it didn't feel bad. And then by the time I got home from the hospital, it had actually swollen so much, I could feel pain from the swelling. Oh, my foot. Oh, my foot. You are such a beautiful foot. We will take you home. We will take care of you. We will, we will comb your little hairs. Oh, you are so beautiful. Yeah. I like my foot. <laughs> Again, there's risk and all. You know? You know, it's like, yeah, you know, there's risk. There's risk in all things. But if I can keep my appendages, I would prefer to keep my appendages. It really is. Go do a Google search for cellulitis, and then try not to vomit. But anyways, Cipro does well. <laughs> Again, as I said with the people, like, all these people are like, oh, you need to take a look at the side effects of Cipro. It's like, well, it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what the side effects of my foot blowing up like a football is. <laughs> so as long as the side effects of Cipro are less than my foot blowing up like a football, we don't do that. Again, sometimes in life there's just no options. Like it, everybody always has. Like it's always funny when I talk about things with people. Is so many people feel like with everything in life there are options. Like, well, Eli, you should really, you should really think about the alternatives for what you're doing. And you're like, there no are no alternatives. <laughs> It's like, here's the, here's the issue I have. Here's the course that I am on. If I don't get off this course, I will be going off a cliff shortly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, anything other than off cliff, I may have to take. <sighs> but anyways, anyways, I think that's about all I have to say today. Here's my nice little view, looking out my window. This is, this is the view I have when I sit here with my computer doing all my little computery stuff. So again, like I say, you can see the nice little ocean in the distance. You can see all the nice fancy buildings. You can even see over there, I don't know, can you see over there where it even says like Holiday Inn? It really is. It's really like, in a lot of ways, it's very much a first class little resort city here. So, uh, with lots of Thai prostitutes. My wife actually had had thought that there weren't that many Thai, Thai prostitutes in Thailand because she had heard all the stuff about Thai prostitutes or whatever. And in Bangkok, you really didn't see a lot um, or see many. And in Utia, you didn't see any at all. And so she was like, oh, that must, must just be an exaggeration um, until we walked like down the street last night and there were lots and lots and lots and lots of Thai prostitutes. <laughs> they were like, Oh, there were so many Thai prostitutes, and she was like, uh, you know, I don't want to go down this, I don't want to go down this road anymore. It's like, okay, that is understandable. We can turn around. But anyways, that is the view, and with that, I've been talking for 31 minutes. It's not a full hour. I feel like I'm robbing you a little bit. You watch 15 seconds of ads. I deserve to give you a full hour of conversation, but, oh, well, I just don't really have anything else to say. So with that... I will let you folks go, and we'll have a little bit more Nescafe, and tomorrow we'll talk about the serious topic of risk.